Hey guys, welcome to Watt Single Track. And today I'm making a video for everybody that's been asking about the safety gear I wear and a lot about the tether. Um, I'm a really avid supporter of wearing full gear all the time. Uh, you never know when you're going to go down in a crash, especially out trail riding. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys my best, quickest rundown of all the gear I wear and showing you how long it takes me to gear up for a ride. So the first thing is some fall shorts. Um, these ones don't have super thick padding, but they're enough to save your tailbone and your hips uh, when you fall in a crash. So mind the uh, partial nudity here. But gotta show you guys how, it, how I get ready for a ride. So, shorts are step one. Next step, these are Demon brand shorts. And the next thing I wear is Demon brand knee pads that have the D30 in them. They are soft and flexible. They're not hard shell. Uh, for trail riding, you do not want a hard shell pad necessarily. I find they tend to move and slip out of place a lot more. These do not move whatsoever. The next thing that I do is I wear dirt bike pants. Um, I found I was tearing apart my jeans and my regular pants all the time. So got some good dirt bike pants, really heavy duty. They're Kevlar line in certain spots, but they also are elastic in all the places that matter. So get yourself a set of these. It'll save your clothes a lot. Otherwise, you'll find yourself ruining all your good clothes. I always ride with the under t-shirt. Um, I don't like the feeling of the gear straight against my body. So, I wear an undershirt. So, next thing, and this is probably one of the most crucial pieces of gear that you should not skimp out on at all, is buy yourself a set of good street bike motorcycle boots. So, they're relatively similar in size to a tennis shoe. Um, not quite as big and bulky as a dirt bike boot but they have metal toe sliders. Um, the ankle support is awesome. And hard pad there and a hard pad back here to protect your Achilles tendon. Uh, because if you have a pedal come back and clip you in the back of the ankle and it cuts your Achilles tendon because you're wearing tennis shoes or high tops, um, you're gonna have a really hard time getting out of the trail because your foot's not gonna work. So these also stop cross twisting. So really, really crucial piece of gear. Um, these are like 400 bucks, but worth every penny. $400 is a lot cheaper than a $5,000 broken ankle and medical bills and missed time work. So they're pretty easy. All they are is you pull a string and there's a slider. So pull them tight push the slider down, lock the string, put it on, tuck in the back protector, pull the zipper up. So that's how really easy to get your feet in. Simple method for pulling them tight. And yeah, they got metal hooks in all the right places. They have a whole a toe box but it's still flexible up to here so basically there's a whole toe box out here to protect your toes but still allow 
uh, free movement, say like for shifting a motorcycle, even though that's not what we're using them for. The next piece of gear is I wear one of those jacket type box bionic jackets, whatever. There's all sorts of names for them. Bottom line is they have all your pads attached in a jacket. Makes stuff like this really easy. So that, that way you're not putting on five different sets of elbow pads and chest protectors. Stuff you got to take your watch off. So it goes all the way down the back, um, which is really important. I ride with a backpack, but I still think this is important. So, and then, so you don't look like Robocop going down the road. Put on a jersey because you're gonna end up falling and tearing up your t-shirts. And a t-shirt isn't much, but it will protect you a little bit. A lot better than just riding with nothing or just a jacket. Alright, and so the next things I got are, I wear, I'll start with gloves because those go on first. I wear Fox Bomber gloves. Um, they have little carbon knuckles and backs of the fingers. So... They do a really good job at protecting the skin on your fingers. Um, I really don't like the hillbillies or the ones that are fingerless. Um, I've torn my fingers up way too many times. So get yourself a good set of dirt bike gloves. These are like 80 bucks, 70, 80 bucks worth every penny. And then the next thing I got, I wear two different style wrist guards depending on the occasion. Um, these are Demon brand. They're more like traditional wrist guards. But the only difference is they have a front and back plate just like the rest. But right here there is a big thick D30 pad that helps absorb impact. Um, so I really like these. They're a little bit smaller. And then my other option is my flex meter wrist guards which a lot of you are familiar with. Um, these are super effective but they are a bit longer and a little bit bulkier. Um, for today's ride. I'm just gonna wear my regular little ones. It's gonna be kind of cruising and easy, but my ribs are finally healing up enough to go out and ride. The first few days I rode after, I kind of regret. Uh, it definitely made me more sore, so I've taken a little bit of time off riding to try and heal up before Shred Fest. Got that race coming up in two weeks. So, hope to see, like, Chooch and Zen, Mike, Kelly. I think it's going to be awesome. Going to finally have EUCs racing at a one-wheel event. And then there's going to be an enduro race where it's all the one-wheels and all the EUCs yeah, racing them. It's going to be awesome. But, anyway, back to the gear. This stuff, it, you can't skimp out on wrist guards and gloves. Um... They are what protects your hands, which make you money. Uh, if your hands don't work, you're gonna have a hard time working. So, just gear up. Okay, and then down to the last few pieces. I wear a neck brace. Uh, it's a Liat 6.5. It's a carbon fiber neck brace. Um, these may seem a little excessive but they prevent your neck from tilting too far back or forward or side to side uh, in a crash and I can attest they do work. Um, I've seen slow motion videos of my own crashes where my helmet has pushed into this and has stopped my head from going way to the side. Pretty easy to put on. Grab the other ball strap.
Of course, it's easy when you're not trying to make a video. Usually it goes a lot easier than that. Anyway, clip that in, push it down, um, and then I wear a ISX uh, trigger helmet. Really good helmet, super light, and uh, what I like about them is they're like 600 grams, so one of the lightest helmets on the market. Um, and they have a built-in little like rebar style cage that runs all the way from back here all the way around the jaw so it's not just foam so when you see these other helmets that break and they just have foam and it shears that's it um and that could push into your jaw in a crash this has kind of a rebar structure there's a grid system in here so that even if the foam breaks it can't push in uh really very far far enough to injure the rider so and then it's got a adjustable piece on the back twist dial and the easiest thing about this is the clasp system is magnetic. So all you do, that's it. And you can do it one-handed. Put it on and off one hand. So makes this really nice for trail riding. Because once you got everything on, Once you got everything on, it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to fiddle with the regular thing. So, and then the last thing that I'm going to show everybody is how I attach my tether to my wheel and myself. So what I like to do for the master is I have one end, I had to shorten it a little bit, so I compressed it with electrical tape, ate up some of the length of the tether. I feed it through the back shock arm here, and I take the other end, just pull it through. So now the tether is attached to the wheel, and then the other side, you have a loop, right? So all you do is fold it back on itself and push it through. And then stand into it, pull it up, pull it over, you're done. And off you go.